More on macOS Monterey with Joe Kissel. This is Mac Voices. This edition of Mac Voices is supported by Text Expander by Smile, the makers of world class software. Visit TextExpander.com slash podcast to learn more and download your free demo. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. This is the second part of our conversation with Joe Kissel about his new Take Control book, Take Control of Monterey, and a discussion of some of the features that are coming or being revised in the newest version of the Mac OS. This time, we go right in and dig into Safari, one of the most controversial features, and I'll let Joe do the talking. But anyway, like, let's not say more about focus. Let's let's switch to something totally different, like something that we can all agree on, uh, which is Safari. (laughs) Okay. If, If anyone has been following any Mac or iPhone, iPad related news site, blog, podcast, like anything over the summer, uh, you will certainly have encountered many, many unkind words having been said about the new versions of Safari. Apple was, you know, I, I think it was uh, John Gruber who who said, I, I could I may have gotten this wrong because people on Twitter sort of blur together in my mind. But uh, you know, like the, the the first fourteen versions of Safari, oh yeah, it just it just works. It's obvious. And then uh, the you know the latest version is like, uh, yeah, I I, I got to explain this to you because it's really smart, but the the smart is subtle. So like you you, you know he he put it much better than I did. But but it's basically like. Uh, let me show you my artistic genius. And like, well, but I didn't need that before. Like it just, it was obvious before how things worked and now it's not obvious. So anyway, people complained about the changes in Safari, both on Mac OS and iOS. And sure enough, Apple did uh, undo some of the worst aspects of the changes in later betas and uh, as as we were having this discussion, I think it's still in a state of flux. I don't think the, the 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 final version of like Safari 15 for Mac has solidified. But uh, but man, uh, they they took something that was just obvious and clean and made sense and worked, and and for for unknown reasons decided that they're going to muck it up. So. Um, so I talk about how like the tab bar at the top of your window is is new now. And uh, at, at a certain point, there was a new default arrangement, which everybody flipped out about. And so Apple Apple said, well, okay, that's just optional. We're not going to turn that on by default. You can you can do it that way if you want. But here, you know, the, the default is like sort of kind of similar to the old way. But it's still worse. Like it's still harder to figure out which tab is currently active. And the, the, the toolbar is no longer as, as easy to navigate as it used to be. And so there are, there are some things about it that just like, it was working before, it was fine before, it wasn't a problem and now you're messing with it. So, and this whole thing of like, whatever color your web page is, it, now the whole toolbar becomes that color. I'm like, but I don't, I don't want my toolbar to be purple. I like purple as much as anybody, more than most. I like purple, but like, uh, I mean, look, I got a purple watch band. But when I go to the Tidbit site, um, and they have a purple banner at the top, awesome. Uh, I don't need my toolbar to also be purple. I want my toolbar to be my toolbar so I can see my controls. That's what it's there for, for, to show me controls. So when the color bleeds into the frame to make it look like the whole window is one big web page, that isn't useful for me. That's irritating. And so, yeah, you can turn that off, but it's on by default. And that's sort of Apple's new aesthetic is we, we want everything to look like content. Oh, controls. Oh, they're so intrusive. We don't, we don't, we want to hide any, any buttons or menus or things. We just want to get them out of your way so that you have this clutter-free experience and you can just experience your content. But like, 
I, I need my tools. Like if I have a, if I have a workshop, I'm not going to like take a, you know, open a drawer, pull out a screwdriver, do something with it, and then put the screwdriver back in the drawer. It's like, oh, now I need a hammer. Find another drawer, pull out the drawer, pull out the hammer, hammer with it. Like, I don't do that. Like, you know, just, just, just gonna have, I'm going to have the tools like lying on the workbench. I'm going to grab what I need and do it and grab another thing. Same way in my kitchen. Like, I don't want to hide all of my knives and spoons and, you know, kitchen stuff because I'm using them. The tools are useful. They're important. Uh, like the content is important too. Like the thing that you're building or cooking or the website you're looking at or the document you're writing. Of course, those are important, but, but you do need tools and it's okay. It's okay to show me the tools. It's okay to not make me hunt for the tools. And Apple seems to really, in like all their apps, but Safari is, is a, a prime offender. They, they want to hide the tools until they're sure you really need them. But then once I go looking for the tool, then it takes me more effort to find it. And I just mm, really hate that. So to, to, to just somewhere in there, I think you said it. And I want to make sure folks know that can be turned off. Yeah. And it's not just so, the color, mind you. I mean, the color is one aspect of it. The, the different, uh, the, the, the different mode of the toolbar where they have like the, the standard, thing where the tabs are sort of separate from the address bar. And then they have a, um, what are they calling it? Condensed, compressed, compact, I don't know, compact, I think, uh, arrangement where like the, 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 the toolbar shrinks. So you have the tiny little address bar and then all of your tabs sort of smush next to it. And, um, it just makes everything harder to see and harder to find. Um, so those are things I don't like, uh, a thing that I am gradually warming to is tab groups. So now you can say, well, I have, uh, you know, 10 tabs on this topic and five tabs on this and 50 tabs on this other. And instead of just having like, well, here's all my tabs, you can have, uh, you can, you can separate them into their, their sort of like folders and you can say, well, let's just show me all of my you know, take control tabs and there's all my take control tabs and everything else is gone. Okay. Now show me all of my, you know, baseball tabs. I don't have any baseball tabs, but I, that was just a thing that came. Okay. So show me, show me all of my whatever tabs and those groups of tabs can sync amongst all of your devices, you know, your, your iPhone and iPad and your other Macs. And, and so that's nice. Uh, it turns out, turns out that is, that is a useful thing for me. And I appreciate having that and I, and I use it, so that's that's good. Um, it's now a little bit harder, a little less, a little, a little more awkward to see just like regular tabs that are open on your other devices. You can, but they're not in the same place they used to be. Uh, so there, there are some positive improvements to Safari and of course, uh, some little privacy improvements as well. But um, yeah, uh, it's just, yeah. Overall, it's just it's just not making me happy. It does not make me happy. I've I've looked at this because I'm one of those that uses folder, not in Monterey but in Big Sur and before, that I have folders with bookmarks in them in sure. the tab bar, and so you know I can click that it drops down. I can open any one of those, or I can open them all at once. Yeah, and I've I've found that always like super useful. And now I'm curious because I, I have not played with the betas at all because for, for, if nothing else, it just seemed like a waste of time because they kept changing things uh, so yeah. radically in Safari. So now I'm I mean, anxious to see how that works in tab, conjunction with the way I've been doing it. Yeah. Tab groups are, are conceptually different from folders of bookmarks. And I, I use folders of bookmarks too for certain things. Those are for things that are kind of fixed, like, I'm like there there's a category of of things that I I always want to be able to refer back to this specific set of bookmarks for this particular thing. Tabs are like a fleeting thing. Well, I did a web search for something that I'm interested in and now I open 10 tabs about that topic. And I'm not going to care about that topic next week, but but for today, for the for the time that I'm thinking about that Hey, let's just give those 10 tabs a name so that I can slide them out, slide them back in, look at them on another device, 
And if I close a tab in that tab group, well, it just disappears. It's not in that tab group anymore. It's not going to sync to my other devices. It's not going to be anywhere. It's just not going to be open because it's gone. Um, whereas if I, oh, there's another, another, another site, I, uh, you know, um, Another 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 app that I found in this category. So I, I open a tab, and then that tab becomes part of that group, and that syncs across the devices. Um, you don't have to manually bookmark anything ever, and you don't have to go through any annoying process to remove a bookmark. They're all fleeting, ephemeral, and, and that's great. They're uh, they're just um, it, it's just just a tool to help you um, do, do a sort of ad hoc organization of the of the tabs you're working with at any particular time and it's uh, it's kind of neat that's maybe the best explanation i've heard of it yet and i've read a lot of them and it's like okay i think i'm getting it now you make it make a lot more sense and so yeah because you're right you do gather up i mean if i'm researching i don't know you know a, a new mouse or something you know i'm i might click on you know three amazon links and two review links and you know something else and a youtube link and to be able to say okay these were all under my mouse search but i don't need my mouse search after i've bought the darn things so yeah. you know yeah. it, it can all disappear so that all of a sudden now tab groups make a lot more sense to me yeah yeah. So, uh, yeah, the, I, the, it took me, it took me a while to, to get used to this new way of doing stuff. Uh, but I, I realized, for example, that there are, there are certain tabs that I always have open on my iMac and I, I only occasionally need it on other devices, but there, then there are certain other tabs that I always have open on my iPad and I rarely need those on my other devices, but every once in a while I do. So every once in a while I'm like, Oh, I'm pretty sure I was looking at this thing on my iMac and yeah, you can, you can use the, this, like the existing feature of Safari to like show me open tabs and other devices. But my, my realization that I j just like the way I think and work is I, I sort of group tabs by device. Um, that, that turns out to be really useful to me because then I can have my, my IMAC group, which doesn't mean anything. It's just like the tabs that I habitually normally have open on that machine. And if I happen to be using another device, I need one of those tabs, I know where to look as opposed to like, well, look at my entire list of all of the tabs that I have open on my iMac right now. I mean, yeah, you can still do that, but, but I think this is cleaner and, and simpler. Mac Voices is supported by Smile, the makers of world-class software like Text Expander. If you are a team leader or a team member, that means consistency of communication with each other and with your customers is more important than ever, but also more difficult than ever. Enter Text Expander. Text Expander from Smile not only saves time and money by automating those words, sentences, paragraphs, or pages so that they can be summoned with just a few characters, it also introduces accuracy and consistency. Each time that snippet is used, it is exactly as created the first time. No individual variations, no typos, because you are tired of typing the same thing over and over. That means that once deployed to your team, no matter where they are, they will be using that snippet to respond to customer inquiries and creating documents with exactly what you intended, saving them time and making you look great. Invest a few seconds, literally a few seconds, in creating a text expander snippet and get paid back every single time you use it. And that can mount up to a lot of payments, since you will be using text expander multiple times an hour. Find out just how easy it can be to be more accurate and more productive by visiting textexpander.com slash podcast right now. Find out some of the ways that a wide variety of businesses use text expander to be better. That's textexpander.com slash podcast to see what Smile, the makers of world-class software, have to offer you and your business. Thanks to Smile for their ongoing support of Mac Voices. You, you used a word earlier that I was almost a little afraid to bring up um, with you, and that is mail. Okay, yeah. Um, um, so, so, so let me broaden it out and let, you can go with it where you want. But what kind of changes or improvements or changes have we seen with some of the built-in um, Apple apps that are noteworthy? Yeah. So um, 
Male, and I, I, I will, I will also say, in in the past, it has sometimes been the case that male gets updated fairly late in the beta process. So I don't know that the version of male that I've been looking at necessarily resembles what the final version will look like. It does not have much in it that's new or different. Um, one of the new things it has is support for this new style of extension called MailKit. And so this is, this is I mean, at, at this moment, this is something that really only developers care about. And I have not yet seen any shipping MailKit extensions. So I can't, I can't tell how this is going to play out in real life. But in, in the olden days, which includes today, uh, if developers wanted to change the behavior of mail, they could create something called a plugin. And over the years, plugins have, Apple has, has made more and more restrictions on plugins. They become harder to uh, install and to activate. And it's just more of a pain. And, and uh, because they were always kind of hacky. And so Apple is like, okay, let's, uh, let's have a totally new mechanism for third-party apps to interact with mail, to add features or to filter out messages or whatever it may be. And so that's MailKit. And so there's a, like a new uh, preference pane for extensions in mail. But if you go to that, if you're using the beta and you go to that, it's going to be empty, probably, unless you have like beta access to, to one of these extensions that, that somebody's working on. And uh, Apple says, you know, this is going to be fully supported and better and easier for users and developers. And that's great and more secure. And that's great. Uh, I also know from talking to people that develop mail plugins for a living that those extensions are not going to be able to do a lot of the things that mail plugins currently can do. So that might be really irritating. It might, my users might feel in the long run that this is this was not a good move. So we'll have to see how that shakes out. But it's it's sort of hypothetical for now, um, because. Uh, you know, it's 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 not a feature you can really use yet. Um, I am looking. Okay, so there's this other feature that you actually can use now called um, mail privacy protection. And <laughs> uh, boy, I like this opens a couple of cans of worms. So I don't know how I don't know how uh, how much I want to say about this. Anyway. Uh, we have not yet mentioned or touched on a new set of capabilities called iCloud Plus. And so if you are a, a paying iCloud uh, subscriber, that is you've, you've paid Apple anywhere from 99 cents to $10 a month for extra storage. Okay, now, now you're an iCloud Plus member. And uh, besides getting extra storage, you now get a whole bunch of extra features. And that, Maybe that'll be another conversation another day. Maybe we can talk about iCloud uh, another day. But uh, some of those features apply to mail. And uh, so mail can now hide your IP address. So like if you get a if you get an email that has a lot of a lot of a lot of marketing emails will contain a little invisible tracking pixel. And the point of this is not to show up anything in, in the you know, visible in your in your email, but just that when that that address tries to load, it signals the person that sent the email that you have opened it. So they can tell not only that you have opened the message, but they know your IP address. So then you know they know where you are geographically, and they know what time and what date you opened the message. And uh, this is a little bit sort of like. Not so, not so private, and so there have been some kind of heavy-handed ways of addressing this in the past. But one of the things you can do now is say, "Hey, just have my IP address. Just, 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 you know, if if anything tries to load, just just obscure where it came from, so that at least you're not giving away uh, information that can be used to specifically track you or profile you. So that's that's nice. That's you know." 
a useful thing. And there are other aspects of this that let you uh, kind of block all remote content like uh, graphics that are included just like to show you a picture of something. Um, you can uh, you can block that as well. And that will give the, the sender even less information about you, but also it might hide stuff you need to see. I mean, I've gotten emails from Apple that have just like all these blank boxes and there's a button say, well, you know, load the remote content. Well, okay, I'll load it, but it's it's only blocked because this feature cannot show me these, these graphics. It's supposed to like download them offline uh, or in the background, uh, but th the feature has not been able to do so. I so I get ugly emails from Apple, and I might mention from Take Control Books and lots of other places too, Mac Voices, um, because th this 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 feature that's supposed to help protect your privacy, which I appreciate, of course, has this side effect of blocking out things you might actually want to see without extra effort. So. I have, you know, I have kind of kind of mixed feelings there. Yeah, but Joe, isn't that sort of a function of any of the filters or barriers or whatever we put up? Sort of back to our notifications discussion. You know, the we're not quite to that that intelligent assistant that knows exactly, you know, what who we want to hear from and when about what. So we have to try to do our best to set up the rules that suit us, and. Uh, I mean, am I am I being too forgiving in that area, or is I, it just well, maybe, maybe because because it was working for me before, so there oh, there, oh, okay. there there was a way of setting mail up previously that could could block the nasty tracking graphics while showing you the graphics that you actually wanted to see without forcing you to do extra work. But we don't have that at this moment. Now we have this, you know, pick, pick, you know, tr track everything, or I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit there, there is a, a little bit of control, but, but less than I would like. So I, I really, I feel like I'm, I'm now forced to go to more effort to get a worse result. And, and I, I have a, a sort of worse choice confronting me than I used to. That's my opinion. Okay. Anyway, okay. Well, I could, I could sort of, I could sort of say, you know, you asked about Apple's built-in apps. Oh, well, mail is one of them, and you know, there's there's new stuff in Maps, and there's new stuff in Calendar, and Reminders, and Notes, and like I could go through the whole list. I'm not going to go through the whole list, but there's lots of there's lots of new apps with new features, and I kind of and some of them are like, well, that's nice, that's cool, I'm I'm glad I have that, and and some of them it's like eh, it was fine before, really. <laughs> but those changes are all documented in the book. Oh yeah, so of course. If if they're important to me, I can go and look at the one for notes and I don't care what they've done to photos or whatever or mail. So That's right. Well, yeah, of course now that you mentioned photos, it it must be said. Uh, you know, you go to the Monterey uh, page on Apple's website. It's like, "Oh, here's the 100 new features and and a, a bunch of these features have little tiny asterisks next to them and the asterisk is like coming later in an update to Monterey. So I already mentioned like, you know, share play is going to be one of those things, but photos, like most of the new photos features that Apple is highlighting on the Monterey page have that asterisk They're They're coming later. So sounds like they might be interesting, but I can't see them yet. So I don't know. Um, and, um, this hap this is not the first time this has happened, of course, but, but it always bugs me because <laughs> Apple has these, these wonderful flashy you know, keynote presentations at WWDC. And it's like, oh, here's the new thing that it's really why you wanted to do this. And here's this page of all these new features. But then when the ones that are most important to you don't show up until months later, then I feel, feel a little bit misled. Yeah. And, you know, this is something else that I, I mentioned with Josh. Part of me says, from a user perspective, that I'm not exactly unhappy that all the new features aren't available. Because yeah. as they drift out, those features get more press. They get more, this is how you use them. As opposed to, hey, iOS 15 or Mac OS Monterey is here, and here are these 50 new features. And I just go, oh, my God, you know, and I pick two or three, and then I never get to the others. And yeah. so I, I kind of like the idea that and, – and it almost makes me wonder, you know, if this is not the way we should see software developed and, and released by Apple. It's just a, a few features at a time, 
you know, an app at a time, a little bit, a little bit more just consistent, regular thing, as opposed to, you know, the, the one big, okay, now we have Monterey. On the other hand, I guess they have I, I to do that. To set, in, I'd be yes. very much in favor of that approach. <laughs> okay. Well, good. Then it's not just me. So, no, but no, I guess no. they do have to have a demarcation point at some point of some kind to say, you know, we were there, now we're here. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I actually prefer the, just, just give me a new feature when it's ready and, and don't, don't tease me with stuff that I can't use and, and don't, don't feel like you have to like dump a big thing on me every summer. Just, uh, yeah, I, I'd, I'd like that. I, I doubt that we'll see it, but I would like that. Yeah. Well, I, Apple, if you're listening, you know, and, and, or maybe that, you know, maybe that's kind of their strategy that, you know, once I, once Mac OS, Monterey is fully formed, we will have all those features. But Mac OS Monterey is rolling out with this subset and the others will come later. But uh, but yeah. I'm with you. I want them to be finished. Please don't roll out half big features. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, on, on which topic, if if I may mention one more thing, I know this is running a little bit long, but that's okay. What do you got? You know, you know, I wrote a book about automating your Mac, right? I I, I love automation, and you know, I, Apple Script and Automator and Shell Scripts and Macro Utilities, all those. I love that stuff, man. I, I I love making my Mac do more work for me. So I was extremely interested to see that shortcuts was coming to the Mac. You know, Shortcuts has been on iOS, iPad OS for years. Yeah, we got a book on it. Rosemary Orchard wrote, wrote a book on Shortcuts and it's great. And boy, uh, iOS users just have really been digging Shortcuts for a long time. It's gotten better, more powerful, easier to use. Now it's on the Mac and hey, you can you can import your, I mean, your, your, your iOS shortcuts just come over automatically and most of them just kind of work. And not only that, you can take your automator workflows and import those and those will just work. And like, oh man, that's great shortcuts. Boy, it's easier to use than automator and automator was easier to use than Apple script. And this is great because now we're bringing automation to more people because it's more accessible and approachable. And you have this big library of things that already work on your other devices. This is super exciting, super excited about shortcuts. And then I I opened the shortcuts app and I'm like, let's just try some of the built-in ones. It's just, let's, let's just try some of the ones that Apple supplies and they just like, they don't work. Like, okay, let's try some of my ones that worked fine on my iPhone. Yeah, that does, those don't work either. Some of them do sort of, and some of them like just totally don't like, okay, all right, all right, but let's, let's import some of my automator workflows. Oh, error. This one contains a thing that, isn't supported by shortcuts. Oh, let's try a different one. Oh, a different error. This one contains a different thing that isn't supported by shortcuts. And I'm like, okay, can I just make like the simplest shortcut in the world? Just like a two-step shortcut that like, I don't know, grabs the name of the song that's playing right now in music and tells me that just throws it up on the screen, like a two-step shortcut, super easy. I have it on my iPhone, it works great, works on my iPad, great, no problem. Put the same thing on my Mac and nothing happens. And so I, I just like, I kept doing this. Like, can I, can I make shortcuts on the Mac do anything useful for me? And it just wouldn't, like a lot of, uh, a lot of the shortcuts that I tried, either in, including ones supplied by Apple, Mac only, you know, like especially for Monterey shortcuts, they either did nothing or they were very buggy or there were particular actions within them that did not work. I couldn't import literally any of the automator actions that I depend on uh, daily because they all had some something about them that didn't translate to shortcuts. And man, I I want to like it. I really, I, I look forward to liking it. I look forward to using it. This is a cool thing that everybody should be super happy about. But as of where we are right now in the betas, mm, mm, it's rough. It, it gives me that like, that like Roy Kent 
growl like mm, like I've just mm. that was a Ted Lasso reference yeah, for yeah. those who don't know. Yeah, sorry. Like I just I, I know one, disturbs me. One, one must assume that everyone watches Ted Lasso, but anyway. Okay. Well, so it sounds like that as much as anything, grab this book to find out where some of the pitfalls are, at least out of the gate. And to go back to what you said before, Joe, there will be a 1.1 update shortly after yeah. the actual release so that we we then know what isn't working yet or isn't working fully and what still is coming. Yeah. One of the reasons, I mean, we, we release these books while the operating systems are still in beta for two reasons. One reason is that we have a lot of customers that do install the betas for whatever reason, and we want to help those people use however much of it is working at that at that point and understand it. Uh, but the other reason is to tell people what to expect, even if you are the sort of person who wisely would never install a beta, you're going to wait. You might wait till 12.1 or 12.2. That's fine. But you do want to know what you're getting yourself into. You want to know what great new things you can look forward to. You want to know what might be a source of concern. And when you are ready to, to take the leap, you want to make sure that you're prepared and you know what the process is to get from here to there. So, th so this book is, is to help with all those situations. If you are using it right now, you want some help with what's there. If it, and honestly, I, I, this may sound like I'm kidding, but I'm really not. We've talked about this before. A lot of things, you'll see something go wrong and you'll think, oh, I must have screwed up. I must have clicked the wrong button or had the wrong setting. It's like, no, no, no. It's not you, it's Apple, okay? And I, I feel like that has to keep being repeated to reassure people who are worried that they're messing up, that they are not getting something obvious, they're not doing the right thing. No, no, most of the time it's not you, it's Apple. It's it's like it's it just just to like tell people don't worry about it. I know this isn't doing the thing that you thought it was going to be doing. It's it's not that you've done anything wrong. If there's a bug, it's not finished yet. It's okay. It'll 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 get there. Yeah, it's true, and you know about a lot of things too. Um, so what kind of pricing do we have for this book? And are you do I'm assuming you're doing some bundles. Yeah. So uh, the book is. Fourteen ninety nine. Uh, if you, of course, if you if you had one of our older Mac OS books or one of our upgrading books, you'll get it for half price, and you will have already received email from me about that. Uh, we also have Josh's iOS fifteen, iPad OS fifteen book, and that's ten ninety nine. So our our deal is that if you buy the two books together, uh, that's just sixteen ninety nine. So it is as though you're getting one of the books for you know two dollars. So uh, we think it's a pretty good deal. It's like 34.6% off or something. But anyway, it's uh, it's a decent savings over the two books separately, uh, or uh, or uh, you know 15 bucks for just the one. And of course, as as uh, you just said, and as I have said, we will be updating this book as well as Josh's book to a version 1.1 1 .1, uh, as soon as possible once they the operating system ship for for real. Hopefully the same day. We usually can pull that off. And then that will tell you what is really the case in the final shipping versions, what bugs have been fixed, what problems have been solved, what features have disappeared, maybe to reappear later, that kind of thing. So that may be the best reason of all to just wait maybe a day or two, let version 1.1 of Joe's book come out before you do the upgrade to Monterey, and then you'll be fully informed and fully guided through any pitfalls. You can certainly do that. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. TakeControlBooks.com, of, uh, of course, is where you want to mm -hmm. go to get Joe's book, to get Josh's book, to get all the great books from all the Take Control authors. Um, and I, I always make the point, and I know it sounds like a sales pitch, but it really isn't. Joe has spent ungodly hour, a number of hours going through this, and so you don't have to. Uh, so you're renting his expertise or buying his expertise for a really cheap price on a per-hour basis. So please avail yourself of it. Thank what do you, you think, Joe? That sound yes. good? Yeah. Yes. I think so. I, but I think it's true. I've. I mean, that's the way I feel about all the take control books. Is if whatever whatever the sub subject is, you guys have put hours behind every page 
that that I'm benefiting from. So I I, I absolutely believe in it. Thank you. Will, will we see you again soon? Oh boy. You know, uh, this, this happens every, you know, late summer, early fall, Apple, uh, Apple does their operating system updates. And I'm like, well, how many of our books are now out of date and boy, boy, the list is long. Um, and I, so I've like, I've got, I'm going to be working through them all. I'm going to, there's certainly going to be an update to the iCloud book to talk about the iCloud plus features and all the other new things. Uh, there's going to be an update to the Apple mail book, you know, uh, there, and you know, once shortcuts is sort of working, um, I'll be updating, take control of automating your Mac. And of course, Rosemary will also be, uh, updating her shortcuts book. And uh, boy, you know, got to got to update. Take control of your online privacy. Got to update. Uh, boy, let's see here. Uh, uh, Mac command line book is going to need some updates. Uh, oh, did you know, things we haven't touched? There's a new digital legacy feature uh, that's going to have to be discussed and take control of your digital legacy. Uh, oh, there's more. There's there's lots more. Lots more. So, yeah, I, I have, boy, I have a list. It's, I'm not going to run out of titles to update. And I, I, I hesitate to say what order things will appear in because it's just the nature of the business is stuff shifts all the time. But I got a list and I'm going to work through it and we will have a lot of new, uh, a lot of new books. Uh, obviously, you know, not just my books either. You know, Josh has got to update his notes book and his Apple TV book and his Apple Home Automation book. And we mentioned Rosemary's book and Shelley is gonna have to update her Siri book and her calendar reminders book. And Jason's gotta update his photos book. And like, I mean, the whole list, right? Every, we got like half a dozen different authors working on, I don't know how many books right now, and we'll get through them as fast as we can. Well, and that means we'll do our best to get them back here on Mac Voices to talk a little bit about each book so that because each one of those, I mean, Joe's book is obviously a great overview and a great place to start. But if you have a need or a desire to burrow down into any one of those particular topics or features or apps or whatever, that's where you want to go. Right on. So we'll we'll see you back in the red room soon. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll maybe I'll move into a different room. We'll see. Uh, okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you, Joe. You're welcome. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. I really, really mean it. If you have concerns, issues, or you want to make sure you get the most out of uh, Monterey, you want to go and get Joe's book. And I think I may take my own advice and just wait to one to version 1.1 1 .1 of the book so I know what I'm up against if and when I do the upgrade. Until the next time, and as always... Thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.